put the stones back, I thought, maybe I'll try some of that life Tony was telling me to get. If I had to name the film that my personal opinion about has gone through the most amount of drastic shifts and changes, it hands down would be Avengers Endgame. When I saw this movie in theaters for the first time and finally got to the ending credits, I was immediately like, okay, this is the best Avengers movie, this is the best MCU movie. But once I got home and actually began thinking about it, it started to quickly feel like that isn't exactly true. But then, when I saw it a second time and once again got to the end, same thing, best comic book movie ever made. And the thing is, it really isn't. Don't get me wrong, Endgame is a great film with a lot to offer, especially if you're someone who's been following these characters for the decade they've been up on screen. But strictly as its own cinematic product, I wouldn't call it the strongest the MCU has to offer, or even the strongest the Avengers have to offer. See, Infinity War, for example, is a narrative and structural masterpiece with the most intense goal-heavy plot any movie can possibly have. It grabs you with the very first scene and never lets you go until we cut from Thanos to Black. Whereas in Endgame, there's quite a long stretch of slow points where the story stands completely still and things don't really even get going until the one hour mark. It might not be that big of a deal to everyone, especially if you're a huge fan of these characters to the point where you'd happily watch them shop groceries for an hour. But regardless, the fact remains. And even more than that, at least for me, there's also a certain bigger problem in this film that harkens back to the earlier days of the MCU. A problem that connects Thanos and the now infamous Marvel rat. But that's a topic I want to cover as its own full thing next week. Today, what we're gonna focus on is the strange reality that despite all the negative stuff and flaws I just mentioned, when this movie ends, you very easily might still feel like it's the best movie in all of history. If you haven't yet figured out why, it's because Avengers Endgame has one of the strongest endings ever put on screen. And when I say ending, I actually mean the entire third act, from the initial snap to the battle to the aftermath. Once we get back to modern day, it's non-stop emotions and stakes and sadness satisfying payoffs all the way to the credits. And so now, let's find out what exactly Endgame does to achieve that. Let's find out how to end your movie in such a way that makes the audience leave the theater thinking they just left the best movie they've ever seen. I've said before that the greatest, most memorable movies are always the ones that function like emotional roller coasters. Movies where we constantly jump between strong positive feelings and strong negative feelings. And the first reason the last act of Endgame leaves such a huge impression is because it might be the wildest and most intense cinematic emotional roller coaster there is. The third act begins with what could be seen as the most positive moment in the film so far. The Avengers just pulled off the impossible and seemingly undid all the death Thanos caused in Infinity War. As in, we did it, we won, and all of a sudden, boom. Before we even have a chance to enjoy the victory, it all goes to hell when Thanos ambushes the Avengers building. AKA, in a blink, we go from highly positive to highly negative. And in a similar manner, the entire last act is built on smaller and bigger emotional shifts just like this. Yes, we found the stones. We still have the stones. Oh crap, they're coming for the stones. Phew, it's okay. We're okay. Oh shit, they got the stones. Yes, no, yes, no. Obviously, this is nothing new. I've talked about emotional reversals like this before in other movies too. But the reason Endgame stands out is because thanks to the decade of build-up it has on its side, it manages to raise these positive and negative moments to such extreme levels of intensity that at least I've never seen done before. For example, look at the moment where Stark and Cap and Thor are taking Thanos head on. The whole movie has been about getting a second chance at this moment, to join together to beat Thanos. And now that we have that chance, turns out it's still too much. Turns out that even when our strongest Avengers are together and giving everything they have, they simply cannot defeat Thanos. They're just not strong enough. Until...
Captain America lifting Thor's hammer at this point might be the most awe-inspiring incredible emotional moment in the MCU. Because for a decade we've been building up that no man beside Thor can lift it. And now we finally realize that what we've actually been building up to is that Captain America is able to lift it. It's all been for this. Like he's gonna do it. He's gonna defeat Thanos. And most importantly, the positive reveal comes right when it's needed most. Unfortunately, even with a positive moment 10 years in the making, it's still not enough. Just like that, we go from the new highest of high to the new lowest of low. We have the incredible inspiring image of Cap wielding Thor's hammer and it's suddenly replaced with a bleak defeated image of Cap's shield being destroyed, which also in 10 years has never happened before. And if that wasn't enough, then we also realize that Thanos still has his whole army left. Honestly, at this point we sink down to the most discouraged, hopeless negative moment these Marvel movies have ever featured. Like I genuinely thought this is it for Cap. Cap. This is where he's gonna go. And if that were the case, this would already be up there as one of the most intense emotional reversals I've ever felt. But of course, you already know what happens next. Avengers! Assemble. When Cap is joined by all the other Avengers in existence, this is a point where even the toughest of men begin to crack and cry. It's a powerful moment in of itself, but what really creates the impact that it has is how we get here. Infinity War has the exact same moment when Thor arrives in Wakanda to save everyone, but there things only go from bad to good. Here we go from total defeated despair to full on inspired ecstasy. In a matter of seconds, we go from the Avengers being the weakest and most defeated they've ever been to the Avengers being the strongest and most united they ever will be. In a matter of seconds, we go from the darkest of night to the brightest of day. And that is where real emotions are born. Once the Avengers have all united to battle against Thanos' army, we begin the section that by logic should be the weak point of this third act, simply because it's more of the same old. Obviously, it's very cool to see all these characters fighting together and the battle is very well made and visually very impressive and it does have its fair share of emotional ups and downs. But regardless, we've already seen this CGI battle against hordes of nameless enemies so many times before. <laughs> And for me at least, I think I prefer more personal focus fights like the Titan sequence in Infinity War. However, this endgame battle sequence does still stand out from all others in Infinity War and in the MCU altogether, because the sheer stakes in it are higher than they've ever been. The whole point of it is for the Avengers to get rid of the stones before Thanos can get his hands on them and snap his fingers. And the movie very effectively bases this entire battle and the entire third act in general on the very strong underlying sense of anxiety of Thanos or his men successfully getting the stones. <laughs> Hold on, that doesn't really make sense. The stakes are the exact same in Infinity War. So then, why would they be stronger here? The thing is, I've always felt that films about time travel have the highest, most powerful stakes there can be, and I've always wondered why. But having seen Endgame, I finally started to understand the answer. It's because we know for sure what happens if we fail. To try to explain this better, look at Infinity War. It establishes the stakes very well. If Thanos snaps his fingers, half of life vanishes. Very clear, very simple, very effective. But even though the stakes are high, they're still limited by the fact that they're only hypothetical, meaning it's impossible for the audience to feel the true dreadful impact of the stakes and the possibility of defeat since defeat hasn't yet happened. If I'm still not making sense, compare this to Endgame. The beauty here is that we start off from defeat. We've already seen our favorite characters not feel so good and turn to dust. We've already felt the horrible consequences that follow. I mean, the reason the first hour of Endgame is so slow is because everyone is so goddamn miserable. 
and this whole movie is about getting that one last chance to undo the terror we had to go through in the last movie, just like Thanos at the end mentions. I will shred this universe down to its last atom and then create a new one, a grateful universe. Born out of blood, they'll never know it. I'm not a big fan of how Thanos goes on about creating new universes and whatever because I have no clue what that actually in practice means. But the main message is clear. Now we're in the exact same position as we were in Infinity War. The difference is that this time we've already gone through Infinity War. This time we know exactly what is at stake. We know for sure that if we lose, what happened will happen again and it cannot be undone anymore. This is our last battle. This is our last chance. And it's that feeling of finality and certainty of what happens upon defeat why time travel films like Endgame have the highest of stakes. It's why every time Thanos catches even a glimpse of the stones, you're practically eating your nails in pure anxiety. Because basically, bad things always seem much more possible and likely to happen when you have already seen them happen, as opposed to just hearing that they could maybe perhaps happen. Obviously, in horror films, fear of the unknown is your friend. But if you're making a big action movie where your heroes run to fight your villain, you have to make the stakes of that fight clear. And while the fear of losing something can be very strong, it will never be as strong as the fear of losing something that you've already once lost and by sheer effort and miracle have managed to get back. After the battle section is done, we then move to the actual ending conclusions of the film, which might be the biggest factor in why you leave the theater thinking you just saw the greatest film ever. And the reason I say that is because with pretty much every character conclusion that this movie gives you, it's like you get to finally finish a puzzle you've spent years or sometimes even a decade building. For example, take the way Thanos is ultimately defeated. We have this intergalactic tyrant who all these years has wanted nothing but to snap half of life into dust. And how does the movie kill him off by snapping him into dust. You might say that's obvious, but just last week we talked about a movie that killed off a water-themed ghost by just arbitrarily stabbing it with a cross. In reality, the reason Thanos' conclusion might feel obvious is because when we see it, we realize that it's the only right way he could ever be concluded. It's poetic justice, basically, and it's very satisfying, easily up there with other masterful villain endings like Jafar in Aladdin. In the same way, we have multiple different bigger and smaller conclusions where characters end end up exactly where they've been destined to end up from the start. Thor finally understanding that maybe the reason he's never felt like the right leader of Asgard is because he was never meant to be the leader of Asgard, and so on and so on. But the conclusions where Endgame really makes its mark is the way it handles its two biggest stars, Tony Stark and Steve Rogers. If you look at Stark in this movie, you can quickly see that he was always meant to die. We begin with him accepting death and wishing for one last chance to make things right before he goes. And Pep, I'm I know I said no more surprises, but I gotta say I was really hoping to pull off one last one. And when he does get that chance, the whole story becomes about him using it. I mean, listen to the music and you'll notice that this movie even starts with the musical theme of Tony's death. To be honest though, setting up a character's death earlier in the movie, that's nothing too special. But the thing that does make Stark's death so special is the fact that it was actually set up way before. I guess you could say that it was very distinctly set up in the first Avengers. But the truth is, to find the moment where Tony Stark's death was first introduced, you have to go all the way back to the scene that started the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe. <laughs> Tony Stark was supposed to die to his own weapons in the opening of the first Iron Man, but for some reason was allowed to keep his life. And now that we watch him snap his fingers in Endgame a decade later, we finally realize that the reason he did keep his life was so that he can give it away here to save everyone else. That is the definition of a satisfying conclusion. That is destiny fulfilled. And now that I'm trying to protect the people that I put in harm's way, you're gonna walk out? 
You're gonna kill yourself, Tony. I'm not gonna be a part of it. I shouldn't be alive. Unless it was for a reason. I just finally know what I have to do. And I am Iron Man. Same with Steve Rogers. Even though he's always done his best to adapt to his new modern surroundings, films like Age of Ultron have made it very clear that no matter how he tries to settle in, the present isn't his home. He's the man out of time, and he simply just doesn't belong here. And the conclusion that he ultimately gets is something that didn't even seem possible before Endgame, but now that we've seen it, feels like the only real conclusion there could ever have been. The reason Steve Rogers sacrificed his life in 1945 was so that he can be here today to save the future, and then finally go back home to live the life he always deserved to have. And this is how you craft an ending that affects the audience and stays with them, not only when they walk out of the theater, but for a long, long time.